Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at degrees of accuracy. This is quite a tricky tr topic at GCSE, so you might want to watch this video a few times. Let's look at a number line first and think about how we round numbers. 32.4 has been rounded to one decimal place. What are the upper and lower bounds of this value? So you, we're thinking about before it was rounded, what could that number possibly have been? And we look at 32.4 on the number line here, and we know it's been rounded, and the smallest and biggest numbers it could have been rounded from were 32.35 and 32.4499999, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just say 32.45. Just take a minute and realise that those are indeed the smallest and biggest numbers that can round to 32.4. Okay, so we can say that the number was between 32.35 and it was uh, smaller than 32.45. Okay, it could have been 32.35, uh, so we could say it's equal to, but it has to be slightly less than 32.45 because actually 32.45 would round up. Uh, so you have to remember the inequality goes this way with a less than or equal sign on this side a less than the sign on this side. If you get confused, a good way to think about this is uh, one decimal place represents 0 0.1. The amount is 0 0.1. And what we do is we half that value. It's been halved, uh, it's been rounded to one decimal place, that's 0 0.1. We half that to 0 0.05. And then we add or subtract 0.05. So 32.4, add or subtract 0.05, gives us our two possible bounds. So just half the uh, accuracy, uh, the degree of accuracy, and then add or subtract that amount. And you do get the upper and lower bounds for that value. Okay? Now, uh, let's look at an exam question for this. So example one, look at the rectangular field drawn. We've got the rectangular field here. The side lengths have been rounded to the nearest metre. What are the upper and lower bounds of the lengths? Well, the two lengths are 117 metres and 340 metres. They've been rounded to the nearest metre. So we start by halving a metre. A metre divided by 2 is 0 0.5. And we add or subtract 0 0.5 from the lengths. So the lines are here, we add or subtract 0 0.5, and we write it as an inequality. Here is the inequality here. So uh, 116.5 is less than or equal to, our number is less than or equal to 117.5. Uh, 339.5 is less than or equal to 340, is less than 340.5 um, metres. Okay, those are the upper and lower bounds of the lengths. Question B, what is the upper bound of the perimeter of the field? Okay, so we want the perimeter will be given by the length plus the height plus the length plus the height, adding them all together. But we want the upper bound, so the largest possible perimeter. And to do that, uh, we're going to need a big length and a big height. To get the perimeter as big as possible, we want the length to be as big as possible. So you're going to take the longest possible lengths and the longest possible heights of those and we substitute those in. So we're selecting 117.5 and 340.5 because they're the longest possible lengths to make the longest possible perimeter. And if you put that into a calculator, you should get 916 meters. Now, what is the lower bound on the area of the field? Okay, so the area of the field will be given by the base times height, but we want it to be small. To get a small area, we need a small base and a small height. We multiply like this, 339.5 times 116.5, again selecting the smallest possible lengths. Multiply those on your calculator and you should get 39,551.75 meters squared. Remember the units on the end. Okay? And we've answered all three questions. That's correct. Okay, question two. Uh, a ball bearing with a radius 1.6 centimetres, correct to the nearest millimetre, has a mass of 43 grams to the nearest gram. 
what is the lower bound for its density? Okay, we're going to need two equa equations for this, two formulas. One is the equation for density, which is mass divided by volume. You should know that from maths and you should know it from physics as well. And then the volume of a sphere is given to you in the GCSE formula booklet, and that's 4 thirds pi r cubed. Right, let's focus on the volume first. Or let's focus on density, actually. Sorry. So to get a small density, we want a small mass and a big volume. That's because density is proportional to mass. And so you want to get a small density, you need a small uh, mass as well. Whereas because the volume is a divide, uh, you want a uh, to get a small density, you need a big volume. And these are inversely proportional, proportional to each other, because as density goes down, the volume will go up. Now for uh, volume, to get a big uh, volume, because we want a big volume for a small density, uh, we want the radius to be big. So for a big volume, we want a, small, a big radius. Okay. Now, the radius of the ball is 1.6 centimetres. The accuracy is 1 millimetre, which is 0 0.1 centimetres. Let's start by halving one, uh, 0 0.1 centimetres to get 0 0.05 centimetres. And we get to add or subtract that from the radius, like this. Which gives us this. 1.55 centimetres is less than or equal to the radius, is less than or equal to 1.65. Okay. But we said we wanted the big radius to get a big volume, so we're going to take 1.65 to work out the volume. You tap this into your calculator and you should get 18.8165 centimeters cubed. That's the biggest possible volume of this ball. Now, we're going to use a density formula. We need the mass, which is 43 grams, and it's been rounded to the nearest gram. We half a gram, which is 0.5 grams, and we add or subtract that. The bounds on the mass are 42.5, it's less than or equal to mass, it's less than or equal to 43.5. We want a small mass, so we select the smallest possible mass, which is 42.5, and we select the biggest possible volume, which we've already worked out. Tap this into your calculator again, and you get 2.25 grams per centimetre cubed. We can round that to 2.26 grams per centimetre cubed. And that is the final answer. Okay, quite a lot of steps to that one. I think you should rewatch the video a few times to make sure you're happy. If you are ready, you can try this question here. It says the volume of paint in a barrel is 1,200 litres to the nearest 10 litres. The paint is divided into cans of volume 1.8 litres to the nearest 0.1 litres. What is the upper bound on the number of cans that would be needed? Okay. Pause the video now and try this yourself. It will take you about five minutes to solve this question. Pause the video, good luck, and when you're ready, I'll reveal the answers in three, two, one. Okay, so the volume could be between 1,195 litres uh, to 1,205 litres. The... Uh, the cans could be a volume 1.75 to 1.85 litres. To get a big number of cans, you need a big volume divided by a small can volume. And you would get 1,205 divided by 1.75, which is 688.57. But because we need a full can, that is 689 cans. And that is the final answer. Okay. Thank you for watching this week's video from Advanced Maths. Uh, I've tried to keep this as simple as possible, uh, but this is a complicated topic, so you might want to uh, revise this yourself. Remember to like and subscribe to see future videos, because we've got plenty more videos coming every week for GCSE Maths. Thanks for watching, and good luck in your exams. Bye for now.